He's gone, Nadzik. He's gone. Nadzik doesn't know what to do. Nadzik went in 18 days from resenting the little rat to falling in love with him. Nadzik has been giving him tongue baths and they kiss each other and sleep right next to each other. But what I dreamed would eventually happen did happen. A few days ago when I said, where's Peppy? Because he wanders off randomly. Nadzik didn't seem to get the concept. Like, well, I don't even know who that is. Today, when Pepe was missing, Nadzik went very intensely hunting for him. And when we finally found him, we, we went up to the drive through liquor store in front of that property, and I hadn't had anything to drink for a couple hours, so I got a couple of drinks. And he was right there when we came back. He must have stumbled out. He, Maybe even as we were going into that store, he was following us. So, I don't much like thinking about the way he died. Uh, it's incredibly ironic and a tremendous humiliation for me. Uh, I said a bunch of years ago that I wanted my memoir to be titled A Thousand and One Humiliations, which is, a, that's the good news because life strips away our ego, strips away our pretensions. And the fact that I had this morning made two videos in which I said, you know, these dogs are making me more into a healthy animal in the moment, out of my head. Uh, I'm learning from them. Yeah, but after making the second video, watching Pepe charging through the weeds and chasing after his big brother. Uh, I got so excited about hearing that video that as we walked out of that place, I was listening to the video. My art, you know, my precious art, my creation. And even said in that video, which will be up, uh, wow, it's, it's tougher going than it was coming in. And not once did it occur to me, well, yeah, but what about the little puppy? He can't get through this. And when I finally realized he wasn't with me, uh, we searched for an hour and then gave up and went up and got drinks and came back and then there he was. And I thought he was alive. I convinced myself he was alive because there's a video already posted of him looking to be almost dead on my shoulder because he had eaten something that was bad for him. And he just slept on my shoulder and moaned just but I knew he was going to make it that time because he had thrown it up and I just trusted I knew he was going to make it. This time I spent a half an hour convincing myself he was alive and then I'd say, no, he's dead. No, that I moved and I'd hold him up in front of me. I'd say, you're looking at me. If you're in there, come on out. I will love you. I, I'm going to take, I'll promise to take better care. Come back. I really tried to will him back to life. And finally a guy came by and parked right by us and I said, do you know how to tell if a dog is dead or alive? And he took one look and he said, muerto, muerto. And from the time we picked him up, uh, Magic wanted nothing to do with him. Magic knew that he was gone. So I was telling the people at the front desk, the staff all adored Pepe and Magic, and they liked me enough. The whole place is grieving, and I said, uh, a couple years ago uh, in Appalachia, I went to a weekend retreat on the African tradition of communal grief. And a lovely old girlfriend of mine had died quite tragically and way too young, and I had been crying about her every day for a month. And I wailed and I used, I leaned into the community support where other people were also doing it, as they do in ancient cultures, you know, the keening, wailing. <sighs> so it helps. It helps. And Richard, who helped me the other day get my car back, uh, the f stepfather, and with him the mother of our guest services manager here, Fernanda, Came, we, we, Magic and I were way at the back of the parking lot where we had been this morning. It was a video already up from that spot. Uh, we like it better there. 
So we went back and revisited the spot where we had so many great times with Pepe. And they came around with gorditas. Uh, uh, Maria, Maria Yena, uh, uh, Martin's wife, Fernanda's mom, makes incredible gorditas. And then we headed back for the hotel. I'm really so exhausted and need to sleep. And Rich, uh, Raymond, the groundskeeper, who's a very simple man, and I've mentioned him in another video that from wherever he was out on the property when he'd see us, he'd just call Pepe, Pepe, even though Pepe never came. But I would bring Pepe to him and they'd have a nice time. And so I told him Pepe was dead. And on the spot, he pulled up YouTube and said, what's, what's your address? Enter your channel on YouTube. So I pulled it up. And there was Pepe this morning, the video that's already posted from this morning. And he says, there he is. There he is. He's up in heaven also. Ciel, I think he said Ciel, dor, dor, Dormir. And he's sleeping in heaven. But he's right here. We've still got him. And it makes me really grateful that I have so many videos of our 18 days together. D videos where I said, he's stretching me. I'm... This is requiring me to get my heart bigger. And on one hand, I say to magic, now you get all that. But it's not just magic. It's everybody's going to get that. Everybody I encounter will get more love from me because of this. And I also think probably wherever we settle, if we settle somewhere, maybe out the end of the Yucatan somewhere, I'll foster dogs. I'll foster dogs. It's a good uh, spiritual practice to love them and pass them along. And maybe I'll keep like 13 of my... The Joshua, who's working on the car. Uh, you know, it's, I'm, uh, at the same time, I'm going through incredible cultural shock, culture shock. I don't have the language. I can't get people to understand me. My PayPal card doesn't work. Uh, and the culture is just so different. So... Uh, Joshua took his to his to his shop where he's working on my car and where he has discovered more things wrong than we realized it's going to be a big project and he's working damn hard on it uh somebody's here okay thank you